Happy holidays, everyone. Um, today seems to be happy holidays for me as well because I've received a gift. That's right. Um, Daniel Bogdanoff and Keysight uh, have arranged to send me um, a gift. This is a no strings attached. Um, I don't even have to make a video on this if I don't want to. Um, uh, a scope for saying thank you for making the YouTube channel, which is awesome. Like, I don't even know how to explain this level of, uh, of recognition. Now, I'm not expecting this to be a fancy scope, and there's a couple of reasons for that. One, it's very expensive to get things to Canada, and two, what the heck would I even use it for? I've been preaching for a long time that basic tools are, um, are all you need. And on top of that, let's be honest, a Keysight basic scope is a beautiful piece of hardware either way. And so let's see what we got. So looks like this might be power cord. Yes, power cord. Oh, it seems to come with a, a uh, European style power cord. All right. That's okay. Oh, it literally says power cord on it. What do we got here? Some safety stuff and the scope leads. We're going to get to that after. It's not the interesting part. This is the interesting part. Ooh, what's this? Ooh, certificate of calibration. Oh, I didn't get one of those with my Rigol. That's for sure. And here she is. This is a DSOX 1102G digital oscilloscope. Looks like a two channel jobby. Very nice. The uh, Rigol DS1054Z. Uh, that I had before this is a four channel but then again on my YouTube channel I don't think I've ever used more than two I use uh, you know more channels when I'm just messing around cool so this is it there 100 megahertz two gig samples per second oh I think the Rigol is only one gig samples per second so that makes a big difference it's got a nice big matte screen. Neat. Has per channel controls, which is very nice. Trigger controls here. External trigger. I think I'm going to have to um, move the camera around, get this plugged in, and see what it's capable of. There we go. A little bit of change of perspective, so this should be a little bit easier to see. Uh, first and foremost, I do want to touch on one thing here, is that uh, Keysight really takes their calibration very seriously. So first and foremost, if I can reach over here, the in the box came this uh, envelope here with this like ridiculous adhesive keeping it shut, which is uh, crazy. Look, look how official it looks. Important calibration information. And here are the certificates from the calibrators or the calibrator Tina Chen uh, quality management. Uh, it shows that it was calibrated on a Fluke uh, 5500A uh, on 30th of April 2020. Uh, that's pretty crazy. And then here, back here is the quality manager's signature. Everything is very official, which is actually really cool to see. Um, you, even though this is uh, sort of like a little bit of their more budget brand uh, or budget model, uh, this is this kind of stuff costs money and this kind of stuff is very valuable if you're doing important testing and so the fact that this thing has a calibration certificate and it's taken very seriously means even this like technically budget uh, oscilloscope you can do some real testing with it you can do real certifications with it it's pretty freaking neat the other thing is that the probe that or the probes uh, that they send you send you with it 
are actually relatively high quality. Uh, I mean, the the silicone rubber is very flexible. It's uh, it, it's it seems very high quality. The 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 materials feel very very good, and this is a passive probe uh, that's good up to uh, 200 megahertz which is crazy because this thing, uh, in fact, this is the, the upgraded version of the scope that goes up to 100 megahertz. So the lower end version only goes up to 70 megahertz, but still they send you high quality probes. So again, this, this cost comes from, comes from somewhere, obviously, right? Uh, the other thing is that uh, if you look, I have two competing um, lights here studio lights. One is up in this corner, sort of like up there. The other one's up on this corner. And you can tell this Unity U UTG 562E is at max brightness and you guys are probably having trouble seeing the display. So when I turn this on for the first time, um, we might have trouble seeing this display. If that's the case, that's because of the lights. Now, if we can see this pretty clearly, then that's a pretty good indicator that the screen goes pretty bright because uh, it's competing with studio lights. This is not something that you would have in the workplace. These are a bit brighter than that. So let's give it the first ever uh, turn on, but I'm going to actually put this on the uh, test signal simply because I want to see if it detects it automatically and, you know, gives us um, the right settings for that. So let's hit this for the first time. Can hear a little bit of a fan noise in the back. You can probably hear my furnace going too. It is really cold here. Okay, Infinite Vision with Mega Zoom 4 technology. A little bit of a bulb check going on here. Okay, there we go. All right, so we're in. How do you guys see that? That's actually not too bad on, on your end. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Let me see if we can, is there an auto button here? You know, I really should have taken a look at this uh, first. But it's okay, we'll figure it out. Maybe the auto scale, let's see what that does. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that works just perfectly. So yeah, channels all, acquiring mode normal. So that actually did quite well. And is this live? Yeah, this is live. So there we go, the auto fun functions really well. Whoops, kind of messed that last one up. Um, I was actually looking at my uh, UTG 962E, uh, but I was plugged into the, um, you know, the test signal there. Um, there is a couple little things that don't, you know, and don't forget, I haven't read the manual for this. I literally just turned it on and, uh, and go. There's a little, a uh, couple little things that I have set up on my uh, Rigol, for example where I have just the measurements of what's coming out right on the screen, but um, they don't seem to be here. There might be a way to do it, um, but I have found out that you just hit uh, the measure button here, and you get these auto cursors, and then here you have the frequency and the peak-to-peak -peak voltage. Now, this thing is now plugged in to the UTG 962E, and so I've got it set to 5 volts peak-to-peak -peak with uh, 50 kilohertz, and here we go, 50 kilohertz and uh, 5.15 volts peak to peak. So that is already uh, set up there, which is good. I can change my uh, modes here. I can even go and change the uh, frequency. So let's see, switch that to frequency. can even just go up to uh, megahertz if, if we want as well. So let me just uh, set this up to something a little bit more ridiculous. And now this is 10 megahertz and we'll just hit the auto scale here. There we go. So if you have the measure up all the time, it just shows up like this uh, properly. So that's good. So we got uh, 10 megahertz on the frequency counter here, and the peak-to-peak uh, -peak voltage is still the same, which is pretty good. So, I mean, once you get used to this, it, it is pretty easy to use. But the thing I like the most is that there's the processor is decent in here. 
because there is simply no lag. Like it just works. And then you set this to go to the middle and that's good. And even your horizontal, you know, you can move it up like this, you can move it back like this, and then you can set it back in the middle. Uh, I mean, the fact that this works so quickly is just awesome. The screen is nice and big and bright. Uh, I haven't found the, the way to uh, change the brightness of the screen. I know you can change the intensity of the, of the signal, so that's that. Um, another thing that was a little bit different from the Rigol is that when you press the, um, the, the channel, it doesn't turn off the channel. You have to press it twice to turn it off. When you press it the first time, then you get your, um, your channel settings. So like uh, the coupling, um, the probe, times the skew all of those all of those things is all done in here so i set my probe to um uh, you know one to one because i'm just going straight into a bnc cable here and so yeah that was pretty easy i guess uh the next thing to do is to put something a little bit more complex on the screen and see if we can zoom into it so here we go next we've got um, a the wave file called TV in the UTG 962e and I believe this is this should be square waves because that's what it shows on the unity but I feel like the unity probably can't have it go uh, necessarily that quick but let's just see if I can switch it down into the kilohertz range if it starts uh, squaring up so into the kilohertz we'll go auto scale there we go. That's a little bit more reasonable now, is it? Uh, let's see if we can uh, zoom a little bit. There we go. That looks more like it. So yeah, look at that. We're capturing it perfectly now. So you can actually see those peaks. So yeah, it's definitely the unity that's not fast enough to um, show this up in megahertz, but it looks like the key site is easily able to capture it. Interesting. And then I think if we go to the zoom, yeah, we can actually use this to look around our signal and we can look at the little pieces there. That's back to middle and then back out like this. That's pretty cool. Still getting uh, 5 volts peak to peak, but there's no real edges to take a look at. Uh, maybe if we move our trigger up to the peak here. No, still not able to capture it. Uh, it is a little bit of a weird signal, so that kind of makes sense. And then if we move this down so that the um, unit T isn't being overdriven. There we go set the trigger level and then we can zoom out like so look at all that data it's capturing and if we stop it we should be able to still zoom yeah look at all that detail in the zoom nice you see this is where this kind of uh, quality stuff comes in you get a little bit more memory depth you get more samples uh, stored and you get more samples per second. This is actually a really cool tool. And so that's it for now. Um, I just wanted to share my initial thoughts about this thing. I think this thing is pretty awesome. Uh, I feel like a more capable scope would be even more over my head. This thing is perfect for someone of my skill level. In fact, it's a little bit advanced for someone of my skill level. What I really appreciated about it though is the fact that the processing is done very quickly so I don't have to wait for my scope to uh, catch up with me because it's busy doing um, acquisitions. I really like that everything feels very quick, uh, very responsive, it's really good. So I want to thank Keysight and Daniel Bogdanoff for uh, sending me this. Uh, it's really cool when you get uh, recognition from a big brand uh, you know, they really enjoy what I'm doing here. I really appreciate them sending me a scope. So uh, make sure you check out some of the links in the description. I will direct you to um, Keysight's uh, two YouTube channels for Keysight. One is Keysight Labs. Um, 
and the other one, I don't remember, it's Keysight down there. And uh, check out uh, Daniel Bogdanov's stuff as well because he's the one who arranged this for me. You, you guys are probably going to see this in a full review at some point, but for now, I just want to have a play. Thanks for watching.